beam so I don't blow away. Shield. What a pretty view. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I just woke up and let me tell you, I watch the weather constantly everywhere that I go, even for the places that I'm going to. And I woke up this morning not expecting. that <laughs> I mean I have to say it's a beautiful sight to wake up to but I wasn't expecting that it called for rain last night and the low last night I think was like 39 but it didn't say anything about snow and I didn't think at 39 with rain we'd get snow but apparently We got snow. So needless to say, it's pretty, pretty cold this morning. I'm sure the snow is gonna melt away sometime today because I'd like to go out and explore and it's all dirt roads around here. But let's go get another view. I'm making my coffee right now because Lord knows I need my coffee. Definitely a beautiful sight to wake up to. Unexpectedly. <laughs> okay. Gotta make my coffee so I can warm up now. And enjoy the snow while it's still here. I bet you it's gonna be even more snow tonight because tonight the low here is 30 degrees. And I believe there's rain tonight also. So if we got snow with 39 degrees of rain, I'm pretty sure we're going to get snow with 30 degrees of rain. Okay. Well, gonna sit here and drink my nice warm coffee <laughs> and try to figure out what to do today. There's a couple of things in this area I wanna go see and explore and film. So hopefully it clears up. It looks like the snow is melting a little bit. It is. It's melting. My windshield's still covered in snow, though. <laughs> in a way, I kind of like camping in the snow. I definitely like it better than the summertime heat. But uh, it puts a little damper on things to go out and film and do things, especially since it's supposed to rain again more today. So we'll see how this goes. I have my little heater back here going, so it's not too cold in here. It's a little small heater. But yeah, looks like it's sprinkling a little bit, so but the snow does look like it's clearing up, so that's good. Go ahead and get dressed for the day. And see if this weather is going to hold up so I can go do some exploring.
I am out here at Homolavi State Park and I was pretty excited to come see this place because I love seeing like the old ruins and everything. And there's also another place out here that I wanna go and film, but I'm only here for three days. And I booked this site to come out here like a couple of weeks ago. And when I booked it, I thought the weather would be okay. But the whole time I'm here, it calls for rain and high winds. And when I say high winds, it's 25 to 35 mile per hour winds, as you guys can see with my hair blowing. <laughs> so I have a window right now where it's sunny, just a couple of clouds in the sky and the wind, I'm just gonna have to deal with the wind, but right now it's sunny, no rain, and I'm gonna try to get as much as I can filmed at these ruins in this area because it's a pretty cool area. Um, it's out here by Winslow, Arizona, in Northern Arizona. And the Hamalavi is translated from the Hopi language and it means place of the little hills. I'm reading it right there on the board. <laughs> All right, so we're at the first place where some ruins are and uh, it's not a long hike to get there, so hopefully I don't blow down and we can go see these ruins. Okay, so although this is a state park, the Hopi people actually today still consider this place part of their homestead. I'm reading off the little pamphlet here because my memory is horrible to try to memorize things. They continue to make pilgrimages to these sites, renewing the ties of the people with the land. The Hopi say that the broken pottery and stones are now part of the land and are the trail the Bahana will follow when he returns. So yeah, I was a little confused when I got here because I was like, is this a reservation? <laughs> is this an Indian reservation or is this like the government? <laughs> so, and it's the government, but they have this land protected for the Hopi people still. All right, I believe it's going to be right up this hill over here. And uh, the first set of ruins. Come on. The wind is picking up, so I'm gonna have to yell. <laughs> Looks like this whole entire area is where the Pueblos were. Here's uh, one little area right there. It looks like there's a lot more in just this whole entire area. So we're just gonna walk around and, and see it. <laughs> They said this area where the ruins are they said that it ran that the Colorado River ran alongside it and so I'm gonna guess this is where the Colorado River used to be because it looks like dry looks 
levels like water used to be there. We all know how those water levels are going with uh, the river. So there's no water there. <laughs> but the picture out there showed the water beside all the Pueblos. All right, on to the next area. It's cold right now. 25 to 35 mile per hour winds and 32 degrees right now. It's cold. Okay, I have to share with you guys what just happened. So I was walking back, I was walking down this way and there were four people, two couples that were in a car parked beside me and they were in front of me. But I was just walking back to come to my Jeep and I was up there on the dirt and all of a sudden I hear birds above me, like big, black, huge birds. Um, I just called my aunt, described the birds to her and she seems to think they were buzzards. I don't know my difference with birds, so, um, but they were making their noise whatever you call their noise or whatever. And they were flying right above me and I had little one on the leash. So I pull the leash in so she could be right beside me and I lock it so she's walking right beside me. Well, these birds freaking got down lower and just started swarming around us. There were two of them. And so then I like get right here, right over there where the pavement is about to start and I scoop little one up so fast. I had my keys in my hand that I sw swooped her up so fast that I think one of my keys jammed into her because she started screeching really loud like I heard her. Um, but as you guys can see, it was like right there. My Jeep is here. The four people were parked right there and they could hear her squealing. So they turn around um, and then I like, sorry, I'm like shaking up over this and I start walking to my Jeep with the little one in my arms and the bird was literally right above me. One of the birds, the other one was a little further up, but one of the birds was like literally right above me. And so I came over here, opened up my Jeep real fast and I threw her inside. And as soon as I threw her inside, the freaking birds left. They're nowhere to be seen right now. Nowhere to be seen. I've never, like I know that these big birds will prey on the little small dogs and everything. So I, I'm, that's one of the main things I always do is I keep my eyes open uh, for the big birds. And uh, I've never had any get that close before. Like they were, they were freaking hungry and I really think they were trying to get to my little one. That, holy moly. I've had birds fly over us before and I picked her up, you know, and, but, I've never had one get so freaking close to me like that. Uh, even when I had her in my arms, like I think they, I think they would have probably, if I had further to walk, I think they probably would have tried to attack me to get to my freaking dog. Like that was absolutely insane. And like now there's nowhere, nowhere in sight. Like nowhere in sight. Like even the, the, the four people that were here in their car when they heard a little one squeal and then I came running over here and threw her inside the Jeep, they said the same thing. They said that bird was trying to get to my little one, to my dog. I cannot believe that they're just gone. They just disappeared. Oh, well, I think I see one off in the distance way over there. Yep, there's one in the distance way over there. Wonder if he's gonna come back over this way. Oh my God, that, that really freaked me out. Okay, so I had to share that with you guys. So, moral of the story, if you come out here to the state park and you have a little dog, be careful. <laughs> I mean, I know birds move on and they might not be here when you guys come out here, but still, just always be careful with your, your dog, always. That, that was crazy. Okay, so way over there in the distance is the visitor center for this state park. And then this road right here is 
a loop that you drive through and there's multiple little areas that you stop at and there's little hiking trails. And each of these trails has something for you to see on it, obviously. And they're all, they all look to be pretty much less than a mile. Um, this trail right here is supposed to have petroglyphs on it. I've decided right now also to leave my little one inside the Jeep. So I can't really hike too far into these trails because I don't want to leave her in the Jeep by herself for so long. But after that incident, I'm not taking the chance. But let's see if we can go up here a little bit, just a little bit, and see if we can find some of the petroglyphs. I don't really see any. Well, I don't see any. I would assume they'd be on some of these rocks right here. But I've been looking. Like I said, I don't want to walk too far away from a Jeep because little one's in there, so. Kind of sucks that just happened with the birds because that kind of puts a damper on me exploring this area really my aunt said to put her in the backpack but her little tiny head sticks out that hole in the backpack and i just i don't even want to take that chance huh well i guess we'll just drive on to the next spot but if you guys ever come out here, just look for the petroglyphs. I can't find them. Little one probably thinks she's on punishment right now or something because she has to stay in the G. All right, well, at least we can drive through this loop. It looks really pretty. Yeah, I don't think the loop is really, really long. So, plan was, <laughs> plan was to drive the loop and stop at every single little stop there was and do the hikes. Because like I said, all the hikes at every little stop, they're all less than a mile. So they're not long hikes. I could have done it all in one day. But, as you guys can see, weather isn't cooperating, and wildlife in the air is not cooperating. I wonder if I should go to the visitor center and go tell them about what happened over there with the uh, buzzards. So, whenever other people check in, they can let them know if they have little dogs to beware. Well, this little area looks like it's just a little area where you can come and just sit and enjoy the views. If it wasn't such bad, horrible wind weather today, I think I would probably just do that because look at how peaceful it looks. They call this part the grasslands. Hence, the grass. Yeah. 
can't predict this weather, especially around this time of the year. One day it'll be 70, 80 degrees. And then another day it'll be snowing like it was for me this morning. Oh my gosh, I saw the donkey poop and I think I see a freaking burrow. I'm driving down the road and off in the distance I see wild horses! <laughs> out here but it's a moo moo <laughs> I get so excited for animals <laughs> like it's ridiculous <laughs> winds are like up to 35 mile per hour winds but out of all the days that I'm here at this pretty beautiful awesome place this seems to be like the only day that's going to be decent and I had to film this place and show it to y'all but how cool was that to get where the wind isn't blowing how cool was it that i got to see a burrow i got to see wild horses i got to see moo moos and buzzards that tried to attack my dog and me apparently this place is swarming with wildlife This wind is really getting bad now and I just looked it up on the, the weather app <laughs> and it's actually 40 to 45 mile per hour wind gusts and I just had a really strong wind almost knocked me over when I was out there trying to go look at the cute little burrows I really wish <laughs> the wind wasn't so bad because it would be nice to like just walk up and get a little closer to them I love seeing wild animals in the wild, in their element. That's the only wild animal I see every single day. Little one, little one, <gasps> little one, look. <laughs> Mwah. You say hi? You say hi? Say, Mama got to see so many animals and you didn't even know, thank goodness, because you would have been going crazy. <laughs> And it has started snowing again. Now it started snowing during the day and it's supposed to snow all night long. So I have a feeling tomorrow, this whole area is gonna be covered in snow. Wonderful. 
This is how nice the weather is right now. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Is that freaking hail? I mean, I think it's hail. Oh, look at that storm coming. Look at that storm coming. Look at that hail, I think. Hmm. Wonderful. Back in my little hole. All right. Well, since... I am stuck in a bad, bad windstorm right now. Woke up this morning to snow, and it's supposed to snow again tonight. The winds where I'm at have been up to 40 mile per hour winds. And they were like that last night too. So obviously I cannot cook in those winds with my full kitchen that I have. So, I have to figure out what to do. And I am prepared for when I run into days like this. So, uh, last night I had a sandwich. And I'm like, I don't want to have a sandwich like two nights in a row <laughs> for dinner. I mean, if I have to, I would. So, uh... What do I do in incidents like this? I figure it out. So, I'm going to have, make me a salad. These are those little string cheese things that you buy. And I'm having to make this work inside my Jeep because, well, I live inside my Jeep. And normally, when I'm cooking, I'm cooking outside of my Jeep on my tailgate table in a, my full kitchen that I have but like I said that's impossible to do right now so I have this string cheese because I love this string cheese on my salads I just cut it up and put it on my salads I also have feta cheese I switch it up sometimes and then I don't want to have just a sandwich tonight again because I need to get my veggies in. So, here's my lettuce. Lettuce. Little one, you don't like lettuce. You don't like lettuce. So I'm going to make my salad first, but I am still going to have a sandwich with it but at least I feel like I'm having a whole meal by adding a salad to my sandwich and sometimes I can I know some people like to cook inside their vehicles but I'm really funny about that because God forbid I you know I knock it over or something I just, I don't want to take that chance but I do have a jet boil and sometimes I'll use my jet boil and I don't know if you guys can see, like right now, this plate's on top of my refrigerator. But right here, between my refrigerator and my storage containers right there, is my little one's bed. And so, sometimes I can cook inside my jet boil, and I'll just move her bed over there. And then I have this big open spot right there to put the jet boil on. But I'm not going to do that this time because the winds are really, really bad where it's shaking my Jeep. Like, really shaking my Jeep. And, like I said, I just, I don't want to start a fire. So, now I got my raw broccoli. This is probably one of my favorite vegetables, is broccoli. I love broccoli. I don't like the stems, though. <laughs> Get my broccoli on there. Little one, you don't like broccoli either. You're like, well, mama, make something I like then. And the winds have been like, like right now it's dinner time. And the winds have literally been like this since this morning. It has not stopped. It's been non-stop. It's been pretty, pretty bad. Pretty ridiculous. So... 
this morning I just had some fruit and a banana and I can't be sitting here starving myself during this windstorm because I love food And I am hungry. So, uh, when you live in your your vehicle, like I do, you gotta make things work when it comes to times like this. I try not to get food in my Jeep either. So, I do clean my Jeep out like once every two weeks. Like when I say I clean it out, I spring clean it. Uh, meaning the blankets, my sleeping bag and all that gets washed and I pull everything out and I sweep the platform. So, don't want ants or critters. Uh, what am I looking for now? Oh. So instead of using croutons for my salad, I like to use cashews. Yum yum. Cashews. That's enough. That's enough. And, uh, yeah. And then get my salad dressing and make my sandwich and that's how I cook in my well, it's not really cooking. That's how I make sure that I can still eat living in my Jeep during bad weather. I don't want to live off of sandwiches for days straight. So I got to mix it up. Tomorrow, if the wind and weather is still like this and it's still bad, then I might just have to pull that jet boil out and make me some something else. We'll see. And there's my gourmet meal for tonight. My salad. My sandwich. And yes, I don't like the crust on a sandwich. My audience. Hi, little one. And there's my fridge right there. So I'll use that as a table actually right now, but... I wanted to show you guys the inside so as you guys see I keep everything in Ziploc bags because putting everything in Ziploc bags just gives you way much more space like all my dry food and everything is in Ziploc bags yeah I'm probably the number one customer for Ziploc bags right now <laughs> but yeah and then I'll just Set this up here. This is my silverware right here in this little thing. Pretty nifty, huh? And it's just me, so I only need one set of silverware. So I'm using my fridge as a, a table. So I'll sit down and eat, and little one's trying to get to my food. After one, after I eat, I'll make little one's food because it's a little process to make her food too. So I try to stay positive in situations like this. So we'll just call this a gourmet meal with the view. 